First thing we're going to do is organize our files into different folders. So what I usually do is I have my light frames in one folder, which are the regular pictures of the night sky that I've taken. I have my flats, darks, and bias frames, the calibration frames in their own separate folders. Now, if you haven't taken any calibration frames like flats, darks, or bias frames, that's fine, don't worry about it. You can just use whatever pictures you have taken. So the most important ones in this case are lights. You need calibration frames to get really good pictures, but if you're just starting out and just have taken a few light frames and you don't know how calibration frames work, that's fine. We can just use our lights as well. So what we're gonna do is open up PixInsight. So click on the PixInsight icon. In my case, it's right in my taskbar. So there we go, that's the PixInsight uh, main window. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to this tab called script in the menu and click on batch pre uh, batch processing. Then in that sub menu, go to weighted batch pre-processing and just click on that and that'll open up this script. Now what this script does is that it takes all of your light frames, the regular pictures of the sky that you have taken, and any calibration frames that you might have, such as flats, bias, darks, flat darks, and uses all of those frames and calibrates your light frames, and then aligns or stacks everything and gives you a pretty picture that you can edit and get a nice picture. So first thing we're gonna uh, look at here are at the bottom left over here, I'm just gonna make the screen a little bit bigger here. Just drag that over, okay. At the bottom left, you can see a couple of these plus signs and each of them say light, flats, darks, bias. So all the different types of files that you can have. What we're gonna do is click on lights. So those are the regular pictures that I've taken. So this is where having everything in folders really comes in handy. So open the lights folder. These are all my light frames that I had taken. Select all of them or click Control A to select all. So open the light frames and they all show up over here. Next, I'm gonna open my flat frames. I'll go to my flats folder, select all of them or click Control A to select all of them. So it has placed those under the flats tab at the top left here. So my lights are under the lights tab. My flats are under the flats tab. Now we go back down here to the bottom left and click on darks. And we select any dark frames that we have taken. And the darks show up under the darks tab at the top left. And then we go to bias, click on bias at the bottom. Navigate to our bias frames, select all of them and click open. And now it has placed our bias frames at the top left here under the bias tab. So now we've got lights at this under this lights tab. We've got flats, we've got darks, and we've got bias. If all you have is lights, then that's all you need. You just need to select lights and just put them in here and you're good to go move on to the next step. So what we're gonna do now that we have placed all of these files in these tabs at the top left by clicking on the appropriate file types at the bottom left, these green check mark, uh, green plus signs, is we're going to move on to the right side over here under this lights tab. So on the right side, you can see a couple of options such as subframe weighting, image registration, astrometric solution, local normalization, and image integration. So what we're gonna do is the first one here, linear defects correction, we'll leave that unchecked. Subframe weighting, leave that checked, just the way it is by default. Image registration, leave it checked, the way it is by default. Astrometric solution, uncheck that, you do not need that right now. Local normalization, leave that on. Image integration, leave that on. So once that's done, we move on to the next step, which is calibration. So under that tab, click on the first one here, which is lights and go to the right side and you'll see an option here for CFA images. Now, if you have taken your images with a color camera, whether it's a Canon DSLR or it's a ASI 294 MC Pro, any sort of color camera, 
you want to check this option CFA images so check this option indicating that you're using a color camera if you're using a monochrome black and white camera well you probably don't need this tutorial anyway but in that case you would have this unchecked but since I'm using a Canon 6D color camera I have this checked now go to the next everything else you can leave as default then go up to flats same thing click on CFA images because I took my flats with the same color camera Go up to darks, nothing to do here. Go up to bias, nothing to do here. Once that's done, you can go to the next tab at the top left, which is post calibration. This will tell you how many frames. So 18 frames is what I'm stacking, 120 seconds per exposure. They're color frames, so it says RGB. Integration time is 36 minutes in total. And that's all I need over here. And the next tab here is pipeline if you click on that it just gives you some additional details that you don't need to worry about so at the bottom right of the screen you'll see an area that says output directory by default that's going to be blank click on the folder icon next to the output directory and select the directory that you have all of your frames in your flat frames and lights and darks you can also make a separate folder if you want but I just put everything into that same folder so I just click select folder at the bottom there we go that's all we need to do so after that I click run and I click continue just ignore this message click continue and that's it I'll be right back as soon as it's done stacking okay so our images are all calibrated and stacked and ready for the next step so this is the screen that you are going to see once PixInsight has done all the work so as you can see lots of green check marks means everything went well so you don't need to worry about this screen just hit the button done and click done again there we go and this is the weighted batch pre-processing window again it's back up uh, just hit exit we don't need that anymore so what we're going to do now is go back to the folder where we had saved all the files, our lights and darks. Now you'll notice that there are a couple of extra folders created there by PixInsight. So the folder we're interested in is the master. Click on or double click on master to open it. And you'll see the reference frame that it used. You'll see a master bias, master dark, master flat, and master light. If you did not use any calibration frames, like you did not use any darks or flats or bias, in that case, you'll only see your reference frame for light and your master light. The only one you care about right now is the master light. So drag and drop that into PixInsight or double click it to open in PixInsight, whatever way you prefer. I'm just going to drag and drop it into PixInsight. So it's going to open a couple of these extra, uh, the first two on in front. You don't need those. Just close those. This one right here is your master light frame. This is what we want. But as you can see, it's quite, quite dark. It doesn't look like very much right now because this is just a raw frame. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hit control A to stretch the image, to auto stretch the image or at the top right of the screen, I have a little arrow over here, if I click on that, there is this nuclear button. It looks like a monitor symbol and a danger or nuclear button in front of it. You can click that, or uh, if you don't wanna do that, you can just click Control A on Windows and I assume Command A on Mac. So I'm just gonna hit Control A and this is the image I get. Now you might be wondering what is wrong with the color? That's not what the Pleiades looks like. Well, we're gonna fix that in a second. So here is what we're gonna do to fix that. Click on this, um, for me at least, I have this Process Explorer on the left. You can go to this tab, or at the very top you can click on Process, whichever one you choose to click on. Uh, you can go to all process, click on uh, screen transfer function at the right here. So screen transfer function, double click on that and actually there we go, screen transfer function. This is the window we're looking for. You can also pull that up by going to this tab at the top left, clicking in this search bar and just searching for screen 
transfer function and there it is you can click on that it'll show you where it is and you just double click that to open so that's another way to do it now what I'm gonna do on screen transfer function is I'm going to hit this uh, so you can see there is this button at the top left which has link RGB channels unclick that button by, by clicking it you just unselect that option and then what you're gonna do is click on this nuclear button there we go that is a much nicer image and this was only you know 26 minutes or something like that that I had taken through my Canon 60 and my 8 inch reflector so what we're gonna do now is click on this plus sign over here or this plus button okay once that plus is selected uh, click on this chain link button again there we go and I'm just gonna close that and then click on uh, just anywhere along this area a few times along this bar what that's doing is it's zooming into this area so and then click on this arrow and just select one of these bars and you can move it around left or right to adjust the brightness of the image that you are seeing so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this one a little bit and then I'm gonna move this one a little bit, make it a little bit darker. And if you if you see a color cast on here that you want to adjust, you can do that as well, but don't worry about that too much right now. So just adjust it until you like the brightness level that you are seeing. And once you've done that, what we're gonna do is we're just going to go to process at the top again, click on all processes pull up histogram transfer so it should be under H here histogram transformation double click on that or single click and this is where the histogram transformation window is and what I'm gonna do is on this screen transfer function this is the one that allows you to adjust the brightness of the image that you're seeing at the bottom left there is this little triangle grab uh, click on that triangle and hold your mouse and drag it on to this bottom area of the histogram transformation window and drop it there that's it so click on this triangle hold the click drag it drop it onto the bottom part of this histogram transformation window so that's simple enough um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, once you've done that at the bottom right there's this little check mark just click on that anyway and what we're gonna do now is take this uh, triangle on the histogram transformation window and drag and drop it onto this image now it's gonna make the image very very bright so what we're gonna do is we can close this histogram transformation window now in the screen transfer function window we're just gonna hit this reset button at the bottom right okay that'll reset our view and then you can close this now you have a nice stretched image so next step we're gonna take is go to the process explorer we're gonna crop the image a little bit because some of the outer areas look a little bit ugly so what you want to do is go to all processes go to dynamic crop here this green one click on that so this is the dynamic crop window open what I'm just gonna do is just select the area that I want to crop so for me this is the area I'm interested in so I'm just going to select it like this just drag onto that area and then let go so this area has been selected then on the dynamic crop window what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this green uh, checkbox hit that it will apply the setting and crop the image for me done I will close this and I can zoom in a little bit with my mouse wheel so you can zoom in or out with your mouse wheel you can also zoom with these buttons at the top of the window this plus and minus magnifying glass so now I have a pretty decent looking image what I'm gonna do is click uh, or actually I'm gonna click on the process tab again we can access everything from here click on all processes and 
what you can do if you did not use any calibration frames and the outer parts of your image look dark there's some vignetting what you can do is you can use um, one of the fa functions over here which is called automatic background extractor so click on that at the bottom there is a tab that says target image correction click on that click on correction click on subtraction there we go so what that's going to do is it'll fix any vignetting or any darkening around the edges of your image so what we're going to do now is grab this little triangle and drop it onto your image that's how you apply things there we go so now we can close the automatic background extractor uh, it opened this extra window showing you what it did what it removed you can see some darkening around the edges just close that window you don't need it and this is my new fixed image so I'm just gonna double click on the top here to make it bigger there we go so this is my new calibrated image now what I want to do is adjust the colors a little bit so I'll go back to process at the top click on all processes and I'm just gonna use the curves tool so uh, it should be right here curves transformation click on that uh, I think mine is a little bit too big I'll make it a little bit smaller here so this is the curves tool what you want to do is uh, at the bottom left of the curves tool you'll see this circle click on that circle to open up a preview so that you can see whatever changes you're making to the image in real time and what you want to do is just make a little bit of an S curve here so click on this line near the bottom and drag it down click on the line near the top and drag it up a little bit that'll give your images a bit more contrast so drag pull this one down pull this one up see how it's affecting your image over here you can see that it's bringing out the dust lanes better now what you might all and don't overdo this what you might also want to do is increase the saturation of your image in this curves transformation window still at the bottom right basically there's an S with the rainbow next to it click on that S and what you want to do is just somewhere near the middle of that color line that shows up click and grab with your mouse and drag it upwards as you can see when I'm doing that it's increasing the colors in my image I don't want to overdo that either just a little bit something like that so that looks pretty good to me and once I'm happy with that uh, you can you can hit this uh, this square to apply click on that and it'll apply to your image you can close this preview that we had opened we don't need this anymore and you can close the curves transformation window and this right here is my image that I had taken in 26 minutes with a Canon 6D and an 8 inch Newtonian reflector of the Pleiades star cluster and you can see the amount of nebulosity and right now we processed it very very quickly and I was I was going very very slowly because I didn't want anybody to miss any steps if I was doing this by myself I could have run through the entire thing in two minutes uh, not including any time that the computer took in between to actually you know stack and calibrate the images so this is probably the simplest way I can uh, I can explain getting a good basic image to get you started and I'll make more tutorials if there's any interest in this uh, that'll look at slightly more complicated topics such as noise reduction because as you can see in the background there is a little bit of noise so we can reduce that further and get an even better image but for a very very quick very beginner friendly tutorial um, I think this will do the job so let me know if you're interested in more advanced topics for PixInsight and I can show you how to uh, use some of the more advanced tools uh, in one of my future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you found this helpful. And uh, if you did find it helpful, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the like button and I will uh, make more videos like this in the future. Thank you and clear skies.